The next item on the motion, next item of business is a motion on marriage equality. The business committee has allowed, has agreed to allow up to one hour, 30 minutes for the debate. The proposer of the motion will have 10 minutes to propose and 10 minutes to wind. All other speakers will have five minutes. As a valid petition of concern has been presented on Friday, the 24th of April, in relation to the motion, the vote will be on a cross-community basis. Clark, please read the motion. That this assembly welcomes the marriage equality referendum in the south of Ireland notes that a growing number of parliaments across the world have embraced and legislated for marriage equality, respects the rights of the religious institutions to define, observe and practice marriage within their beliefs, and calls on the executive to legislate for marriage equality for same-sex couples so that all citizens will have the same legal entitlement to the protections, responsibilities, rights, obligations and benefits afforded by the legal institution of marriage. And I call Ms. Katrina Ruan to move the motion. I beg to move. Gurum Argot, a last can or a can call you. Agus Mullen Sinn Fein and Kiartam Conan is social to Ganesh Agus Kultura. I welcome the referendum for marriage equality in the south of Ireland. I will be voting yes, Ta, on May 22nd. I was part of the Sinn Fein team at the Constitution Convention, and I was very proud that all our representatives voted in favour of marriage equality. If, and I hope we do vote yes, if we vote yes, we will be a step closer to cherishing all the children of the nation equally. Sinn Féin want to see this island part of a progressive world where all citizens can be married regardless of their sexual orientation. We want to join the nations that have supported marriage equality, Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, Portugal, South Africa, Spain, Sweden, England, Scotland, Wales and Uruguay. This is the fourth time that Sinn Féin has brought this motion forward and I have no doubt there will be some among ye who will be critical of that. We make no apology for that because until all our citizens have equality. We will continue bringing motions in relation to equality. Shine, it's as simple as that. In relation to Jim Wells, I sympathise with Jim Wells in relation to his wife, Grace, and I am very sorry, genuinely sorry, that they are going through such difficult and traumatic times, and I mean that very sincerely. But no matter how much pressure someone is under, there is no excuse for the comments that were made. What makes the comments even worse was that they were made by the Health Minister who has taken a pledge of office, who is responsible for safeguarding children. Jim Wells violated that pledge of office and I believe, no I won't give way, and I believe that he made the right decision. The only part of the decision I think that's wrong is that he should have resigned from now, not May the 11th. Peter Robinson, the leader of the DUP, now has a decision to make. The public needs to be reassured that the new Health Minister will, will fulfil her or his duties in the department, whether it is in relation to adoption, blood donation or child protection. We cannot continue to have policy made based on personal religious belief and then pretend there is research back, backing it up and we've seen that with the last two health ministers. It is insulting to the community at large and particularly insulting to the LGB community and his comments indeed were very insulting to lone parents. I note that all the parties have criticised his comments and I welcome that. But now the proof of the pudding is in the eating. In the past, parties like the SDLP and Alliance say their party policy is to support marriage equality, say they support their party policy, but then don't turn up, some of them don't turn up for debates, and we hear the most ridiculous excuses. So I hope, genuinely, that there's a full SDLP team here today and a full alliance team here. 
In relation to the Ulster Unionist Party, they have a free vote, sitting on the fence as usual. I believe the leader of the UUP has questions to answer. He's not here, unfortunately. He sits in the committee that has responsibility for equality, but he has questions to answer. His party has election packs with the party that doesn't support equality. And then he's on the radio making nonsensical arguments about saying the marriage equality debate isn't about equality. That's why he supports equality for LGBT, but not in relation to marriage. Nonsensical. He should be here and he should clarify his position. It, this is an equality issue. I can marry my husband. I can show the world I have married him and I can show the world I love him. But my gay friends and my lesbian friends who are in relationships longer than I am, I'm only in a 22 or 23 years, they cannot do the same. And that is not fair. It is not legally right and it is not fair. But Jim Wells isn't alone in the DUP to have made such homophobic comments. The list is long. Sammy Wilson, Ian Paisley Jr., Iris Robinson, Edwin Poots. We had Paul Given trying to bring a bill, but thankfully Sinn Féin with the Greens and Basil McRae are blocking that discriminatory private members bill dressed up as a so-called conscience bill. To the DUP, I say, I hope that none of your children, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, our brothers, our sisters, our aunties, our uncles, our cousins, our neighbours, our friends, our constituents are gay. And the reason I hope they aren't, because they will be living in fear, they're getting very dangerous messages, and they'll be living in a culture of silence and rejection. It's, you've a, there's a good chance that your policies and utterances are hurting them and hurting them so deeply that they fear coming out. As Justin McAleese in his article so eloquently put it when he heard Ian Paisley Jr's remarks and it stopped him coming out for another while and suffering in silence. It's wrong, it's wrong and things need to change in this part of the world. You're condemning them to silence and fear. Now, what are the arguments we're going to hear today? It threatens family values. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've heard it before. I'll tell you when we heard it. We heard it when it was used to justify laundries, when women were hidden away to protect family values while they were pregnant and had their children, where children were sent to far-flung parts of the globe to protect family values. If that's family values, we don't want to protect those types of family values. We'll hear the institution of marriage is threatened. Yeah, where did we hear that before? Apartheid South Africa. Apartheid South Africa to justify why black and white couldn't marry because it would threaten the institution of marriage. The other argument we'll hear today is religious belief. This motion, in case there's any ambiguity about it, this motion supports freedom of religion by allowing religious institutions to define, observe and practice marriage according to their beliefs. But as legislators, we are not here to legislate according to our personal beliefs. We're here to legislate on the basis of equality. And that's what we will do. We will join the rest of the world in equality for all our citizens. My concluding, message, my concluding message is to the LGB community. Sinn Féin believe you have rights. We will support those rights. We will take on discrimination and homophobia using all the tools at our disposal. But the biggest message I want to send to drown out the negative, hateful bile that is coming out from some people, we love our gay aunties and our gay uncles. We love our lesbian children and our gay grandchildren. We applaud your courage, your bravery, and the bravery of organizations working with you. Together, we will build a society that includes and embraces. A gay couple, and I would urge politicians 
when they are speaking, I would urge them to be very, very careful, because a gay couple know only too well how scary it is in the dark of night when a brick might come through the window. It takes courage because hate crime is on the rise to come out. Do not, those politicians that incite hatred, do not wring your hands. Do not cite your conscience. Do not say you are against violence. If your words, if your words are the words ringing in the ears of the person throwing the brick through the window, shame on you. Shame on you. Now today, what we need is this House supporting this motion. Garamagwif. I call Mr. Peter Weir. Mr. Speaker, uh, on behalf of the DUP, we will be opposing this motion for a number of reasons. First of all, it was alluded to, I think, by the proposer of this motion. This is the fourth occasion in which this has been brought to this House this term. The makeup of this House has altered very little during that period, and it seems to us clearly this is an attempt at an electoral stunt. And indeed, uh, the, this is not a serious debate, uh, as indeed indicated by the previous speaker when I think she made the offensive remarks of comparing effectively those who oppose uh, same-sex marriage or redefinition of marriage uh, with those who were, took a particular view in apartheid South Africa. I, I find that deeply offensive. Can I say I think the game was given away by the proposer of this motion when she made reference particularly to the SDLP, the Alliance and the Ulster Unionist Party. This is clearly an attempt to try and exploit differences within those parties for pure electoral gain. And it is disappointing that there's no, there won't be a serious debate on that basis. Can I say also at the outset, although it's only obliquely referred to in the, the motion, the position as regards the definition of marriage in the Republic of Ireland is a matter entirely for them. And I take no position at all in terms of the referendum because it is not my place to try and interfere in the internal affairs of, a, of another sovereign country. But I hope such a referendum never takes place in this jurisdiction. Can I say that... Uh, in terms of this, it is not about a rights agenda. When civil partnerships were brought in, uh, that conferred a range of rights. It was meant to uh, sort out the issues in terms of rights, and that dealt with that. What it is clearly, this motion, is attack on the symbolism of marriage, the institution of marriage, and an attempt to redefine marriage. Uh, my party believes, and I believe also from my own uh, personal beliefs and convictions, that marriage is between one man and one woman, and to, once you redefine that, you lose the essence of, of marriage itself. Now, I have no doubt that some of the proponents of this will say that as a definition is one that is not inclusive, and I freely accept that that is not an inclusive definition, because marriage by its nature is not inclusive. It makes a range of boundaries and restrictions. So there are restrictions in terms of the age of people that can be married, in terms of the nature of the blood relationship between those who are potentially getting married, and similarly that it's restricted to two people, one man and one woman. Uh, and marriage by its nature then has a special place within our society. But I suppose perhaps the most serious thing I'd raise indeed, there was an attempt to try and sugar the pill in relation to this, is the impact it will have on churches and faith organisations. Now, we have supposedly the provision uh, in, this, uh, in this motion today to try and protect those churches I ask what level of worth that is and whether we are faced today with a motion which is really the end game. If we see a situation in which the definition of marriage is redefined in this nature and various churches resist that as they would, how long will it be before the pressure comes on them? How long will it be before uh, the position is before there's either some level of a court challenge or indeed pressures put on them in terms of funding that would go to those, those churches? And for those who see, see that as, as fanciful, we've seen recently in the Asher's case where the exercise of conscience, there is to be no exemptions uh, or exceptions to that for, for conscience. And it is clear, no, I, I want to get through this uh, in relation to that. Similarly, if we're looking at the end game, we were told when uh, the then Prime Minister Tony Blair brought in civil partnerships, this was meant to clear up all the issues. The civil partnerships was the, effectively the, the complete solution to this issue. And that marriage itself was not being tampered with. And yet we see sort of 10 years down the line effectively an attempt certainly to redefine secular marriage and how long then and how much of assurance can we be that further down the line that uh, there will not be an attempt at, at redefining uh, the religious sacrament of, of marriage. I have to say 
if you are a supporter of pure equality as regards marriage, then this motion doesn't cut it for you. Because essentially, it is saying actually you can have marriage on certain grounds, but there will be exclusions. And as anybody who's been campaigning for equality on any issue, it is simply therefore going to be a staging post. And the, the very same supporters of the motion today will be coming back if this, was, if this was passed, and indeed if the executive took action to take further action in the future to uh, remove any exemption for churches. There's no doubt. At best, today represents, and there's been an attempt to disguise this, but at best, this represents a temporary reprieve for churches and those of faith. And for all those reasons, I urge this House to reject the motion today. Yeah. And I call Mr. Colum Eastwood. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, I think we're having this debate uh, at a time of great concern for many people uh, within our community who have not been treated as full and, and valued members of our community by uh, people in positions of authority. Uh, we've had the last few days where uh, members of our community have been uh, demeaned uh, and their value and worth has been attacked. Uh, I'm glad to see we're at a stage now where people do seem to own up to their mistakes and, uh, and take it on the chin uh, and resign because we don't have much of a, uh, a culture of that here yet. Um, I, uh, I think Mr Wells has done the right thing in resigning and I, and I wish him all the best in dealing with his own uh, personal difficulties. Uh, we need to, as a, an assembly, as people uh, in positions of power and responsibility, we need to be seen to be embracing all members of our community. Uh, all members of our community. Uh, I think what this motion does, what the idea of equal marriage is about, is about ensuring that people within our community can access the full, uh, the full services of the state, can be uh, seen as, uh, respected as, full citizens uh, in our society. There is no reason whatsoever, Mr Speaker, why the north of Ireland uh, should be the only place in these islands uh, that does not have uh, marriage available to same-sex couples. I think that is a position we are going to be in uh, very shortly, because I believe strongly that the people uh, in the south will vote yes, and I hope they do. Uh, in the marriage equality uh, referendum. We will be the only place on these islands that does not uh, have that same equality for members of our community. I fully respect people's views on this issue. I understand that people have deeply held uh, religious views. Uh, people within our own party have deeply held religious views about this issue. Uh, the SDLP's policy is clear, however. Uh, we support equal marriage. I know that's our policy because I proposed it at a party conference and it got passed uh, by a majority, and that's how we do things. Um, we're very clear that that's our position. But we also recognise that we have to protect uh, churches, uh, re religious organisations, who don't want to take part uh, in uh, equal marriage. This is about changing uh, civil marriage, Mr. Speaker. This is not about changing anybody's religious interpretation of what marriage is. And of course, marriage has changed over centuries uh, and evolved over centuries. This is about the access to civil marriage. Churches will be protected, would be protected, uh, in the instance that this motion passed and that we finally got uh, to a position of equality with people uh, in Britain. Uh, so I fully respect people's right uh, to oppose, uh, oppose equal marriage, but people need to understand that we need to be seen to be supporting members of our community who have been getting all the wrong kind of messages from this place, whether it's about uh, telling people that their blood isn't good enough to save people's lives, uh, whether it's about telling them that they can't adopt, uh, adopt children when, we ha when people are crying out, uh, when children are crying out for loving fathers. And I do, uh, I do want to, to call on the DUP uh, today, because I think uh, Mr Wells has done the right thing, but I would like to call on the DUP to go further. We have a position where one of the DUP's MPs has said that gay people harm society. I think, uh, Mr. Speaker, that kind of bigotry is what harms society. That kind of bigotry is what got us 
and to a lot of difficulties uh, over the years in this place. And I would call on the DUP and I would call on the First Minister to disassociate himself uh, from Ian Paisley's remarks, to ask him uh, to withdraw them in the same way uh, that Mr Wells did, and to hopefully see the DUP moving to a much more tolerant place uh, in society. Because if they don't, I don't see how any uh, potential British Prime Minister could be doing a deal with a party that thinks that homosexuals harm society. Uh, I think we need to see a complete change in the attitude uh, of that party, and I hope today uh, they can take the opportunity to begin that process. Good. And I call Mr. Danny Kinahan. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. I rise to speak today saddened that this chamber is being used by Sinn Féin to play party politics. And yet, as ever hopeful, that somewhere in the words and minds of all those here is a genuine intention to do good. I will not be taking any interruptions. At school and in the army, I believed, and I'm ashamed to say, joked, carried by the flow, that gay, lesbian and such matters were wrong and could be laughed at. I had never really sat down and thought about it. In the 1980s, when you were due for promotion from captain to major, you were vetted and every aspect of your life was questioned so that you could be judged whether you were suitable or not to take on the higher levels of responsibility of receiving or giving orders, of doing your duty, of making decisions that would risk soldiers or civilian lives when under pressure. One of my great friends, an excellent soldier in another regiment, left the army, and it was only much later that I discovered why. He had failed vetting because he was gay. That opened my eyes as to how wrong society could be. When serving, knowing the risks of doing so, you recognize the importance of absolute trust in your comrades. When on active service, you do not care about the religion, color, or sexuality of the man beside you. And when injured, you most certainly never ask who donated the blood that saved your life. I believe a society that is great, whether it is British, Irish, or Northern Irish, is a society where no one is discriminated against and where everyone is allowed to practice their religious beliefs freely and without fear. I want a society here in Northern Ireland where no one is made to feel a second-class citizen to any extent, and certainly not due to sexual definition. I want no discrimination whatsoever on account of religious belief or sexual orientation. I had a gentleman visit one of my constituency offices last week who proceeded to berate a young man working there about my stance on certain issues, leaving him very shaken. That is totally unacceptable. Debate, yes, discuss, certainly, but bully, never. I want a society where no one feels their religious belief is necessarily superior to others. I so want to see more Christian forgiveness, tolerance, and understanding. I'm proud of the Ulster Unionist Party making this a free vote in which everyone to vote in accordance with their religious beliefs, values and conscience. That is how this debate should be for everyone. I suspect that there are some in this chamber who are not voting as they would really wish. And that on a matter of conscience or religion is wrong, very, very wrong. Serving in the forces or working in a job in trying and testing conditions can create great pressure. Even under pressure, you must always be able to debate or argue and then accept each other's differences, but be able to sit down together afterwards and carry on amicably. That is being professional. That is how it should be in this chamber. For those that cannot, that will always be their limitation. I support this motion because it combines together marriage equality and the respect for the rights of the religious institutions to define and practice marriage within their beliefs. Marriage is not just a Christian institution, but one which crosses all religions 
and it is also secular. Using a different definition, such as a civic union, can make that institution seem second class or second rate to some, and especially so when legislating for their protections, responsibilities, rights, obligations, and the benefits of marriage. It is that strong perception of a second class citizen that needs to be changed, and that is why I support the motion today. Thank you. And I call Mr. Chris Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I welcome the opportunity to speak on this motion, not least because it allows me to clarify and respond to the DUP Westminster candidate in East Belfast, who has quite underhandedly attempted to claim that I and any of my colleagues have been pressurised on this issue. Given that he has close knowledge of how intimidation, threat and attack mm -hmm. inflamed by the DUP has not pressurised me or my colleagues one iota, I find it strange that he purports to believe that party process would have achieved otherwise. Mr. Speaker, the only pressure I put on myself is my own uh, belief and standards to live up to my uh, vocation on this issue. So I will be speaking on behalf of the Alliance Party and supporting the motion. The Alliance Party, Mr. Speaker, is committed to delivering a shared society for everyone based on religious and civil liberty and equality for all, regardless of age, gender, disability, race, ethnicity or sexual orientation, and to stand against discrimination or stigmatisation of any kind. The Alliance Party believes that state-provided services should be available to all citizens. Civil marriage is a state-provided service. As differentiated from religious marriage in the Marriage Northern Ireland Order 2003 and required by this law to be secular in nature, and that is to have no religious or spiritual basis. The Alliance Party therefore supports the extension of state-provided civil marriage to same-sex couples, provided that robust legislative protection can uphold the religious freedom of faith groups to define and practice religious marriage as they determine. We do, yes, yes, I give way. Would the member uh, agree with me and express his disappointment at the deployment of a petition of concern today, and particularly given the recent comments by the First Minister where he felt that some of these issues should allow for freer thought? Yes, I Hasn't agree. I think that, that point is, is well made. Um, and, and of course, we do recognise that there is a, a wide range of sincerely and strongly held views on this issue. There are people who oppose the proposal because they believe that it contravenes their faith. There are people who oppose it because they believe equality is afforded to same-sex couples via civil partnerships. But there are, however, many people who support it because they believe it is the duty of the state to treat all citizens equally. Mr. Speaker, I am a Christian. I cherish the freedom of religion that I have in a democracy to practice and communicate my Christian faith and my belief that marriage is the voluntary lifelong union of one man and one woman to the exclusion of all others under God. I recognize that I don't always live up to that faith and that many people do not agree with my personal belief. That, however, is who I am. I therefore believe that the religious freedom of people and, and groups of faith to define and observe their understanding of religious marriage should be upheld. I also believe in the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. But I believe that the principles of freedom of religion, freedom from religion, <coughs> excuse me, and equality for all citizens that democracy affords provide the best framework in which to build a safe, fair, shared and prosperous society under government by the people. I also believe that freedom of religion relies on freedom from religion. There are stark and brutal historical and present, present evidence of how a lack of freedom from religion has allowed the perversion of religion to justify terror and totalitarian rule against people of all backgrounds, including Christians. I believe the application of these principles and a reading of the law in this matter, in particular the Marriage Northern Ireland Order 2003, support the extension of state-provided civil marriage regardless of sexual orientation and therefore to same-sex couples. As I've mentioned, the Marriage Northern Ireland Order 2003 makes a distinction between religious and civil marriage. It's an explicit requirement of civil marriage that it is conducted in a secular manner. And the proposal is that civil marriage be extended to all citizens, regardless of sexual orientation, not the redefinition of religious marriage. Whilst I have my own faith and belief about marriage, I find it reasonable that a person of same-sex orientation, a legal sexual orientation in Northern Ireland, expects, under the principles of democracy, to have equal access to state-provided civil marriage. 
I also believe that if the ability of faith groups to define and observe religious marriage as they determine is upheld and shown to be a positive experience of marriage, then the aspects of that marriage that they hold dear can survive and thrive. My aim, Mr Speaker, has always been to contribute to respectful and accurate dialogue on this issue. I hope that my contribution today has reflected this aim and the Alliance Party commitment to equality and building a shared society for everyone in Northern Ireland. Mr Speaker, in the remaining minute that I have, can I also extend my sincere thoughts and prayers uh, to Jim Wells and his wife uh, for the health challenges that they are currently facing, uh, but also on behalf of the Alliance Party make clear that the comments by the Health Minister Jim Wells in recent week were completely unacceptable and unsubstantiated and unfortunately part of a wider pattern of DUP hostility to equality for all citizens here in Northern Ireland. The DUP leadership need to make clear where they stand on these important matters. And I would also say the Ulster Unionist Party leadership and supporters who will be voting for DUP candidates in the Westminster election need also to reflect on the credibility of their support for this DUP approach to equality. Mr Speaker, I support the motion. And I call Mr Nelson McCausland. Mr Speaker, this is the fourth time that what is sometimes referred to as same-sex marriage has been debated here on the floor of the Northern Ireland Assembly. All of the issues have been analysed and debated at length during those previous three debates, and the Assembly has, on each and every occasion, voted to retain the traditional definition of marriage. This is not an equality issue, although some people try to present it in that way. And neither is it a human rights issue, although some people also attempt to present it in that way. The European Convention on Human Rights does not recognise what is called same-sex marriage as a right, and member states have the right, and indeed the freedom, not to redefine marriage in that way. It is really about the nature, the understanding, and the purpose of marriage. And it is an attempt to change the definition of marriage to change the understanding of marriage, to abandon the traditional view of marriage, and to introduce a new one. I believe that the traditional understanding of marriage, which is also the biblical understanding, is the right one. A marriage is a loving union between a man and a woman. And it is foundational in the sense that so much else in society depends upon it. It is also universal in that it has existed throughout history, across human cultures, across religions, and around the world. Marriage is also beneficial to individuals and to society. And it's beneficial to wider society in a variety of ways. In the course of this debate, and in the wider public discourse, we should, to borrow a phrase, a Bible phrase, speak the truth in love. And I do speak, I believe, in love, but I also want to speak the truth. Whatever we say on either side of the debate should be spoken in love, and no one on either side should be subjected to harassment or mistreatment. When we uphold the traditional and biblical definition of marriage in our society, we do so out of a genuine belief that traditional marriage is important, that marriage is good, and that it is beneficial to society. The campaign to redefine marriage is an attempt to change one of the fundamental institutions in our society, and to change it forever. We have been told that there could be protection for churches which might refuse to perform same-sex ceremonies. But that is only one point, and this is a much wider issue. 
Consider the impact on churches in Northern Ireland. Protestant churches and the Roman Catholic Church have reaffirmed their commitment to traditional marriage. Apart from a tiny handful of exceptions, that is the position across not only Christian churches, but other religious faiths as well. Across the religious spectrum, there is a general consensus on marriage as the union of a man and woman. Yes, there are promises of protection, but so often such assurances seem to evaporate over time. And if our society alters the meaning of marriage, that is what will happen. Consider the impact, too, on those who work in registry offices and the impact on many other businesses as well, an issue highlighted in recent days. Consider the wider impact on society. This is an attempt to change forever the legal definition of marriage for all of society, not just for those who believe in the introduction of same-sex marriage, but for all of us. Of course, some people argue that we're out of step with the rest of the United Kingdom, now, what has happened in Great Britain should also happen here. However, there are times when it is right to be different. And so for all of those reasons, I oppose the motion. I support the retention of the traditional understanding and definition of marriage and the current legal understanding of marriage here in Northern Ireland. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. And I call Ms. Megan Farron. It's a genuine honour for me today to be able to speak in favour of extending the right of civil marriage to those who are LGBT. I want to express my solidarity at the outset with my comrades across the 26 counties who are fighting for a yes vote in the upcoming marriage referendum, although I don't believe we should have to vote in the first place because, quite frankly, it should not be an issue in 2015. We must make sure that the referendum is won because it's the right thing. This is first and foremost about love and love alone. I can't, believe, I can't begin to imagine the elation of a young LGBT person we, uh, waking up the morning after a yes vote, and I hope someday we can do that for all the people across this island. Um, just to briefly comment on the recent controversy um, around Jim Wells, I won't say much, mostly because I don't want to give more attention to his, in my opinion, disgusting views. Um, the mask slipped, but I think it's important to remember that he's not the only one wearing one. Um, and I have no confidence at all from the DUP party statement that there will be any attempt to address the wider party prejudice, and I do think that's a real shame. We don't just need a change of minister, we need a change of mindset, and we need respect. Of course, today, we will hear the DUP and others talk up the benefits of civil partnerships and how they're more than enough. And I've said this before, you can't be a bit equal to someone, that's not how it works. Um, so civil partnerships aren't enough. And I think if we were being really honest here today, it's not because you think civil partnerships are enough, it's because you think that's already a step too far. The motion respects the right of religious institutions to define and practice marriage within their beliefs. And I understand and respect that some people hold sincere religious beliefs and it means, it means a lot to some people, um, but this should not impact on the law that affects everyone. And since when does religious freedom mean you can blatantly discriminate against fellow citizens? The very concept of personal freedom means that if we don't all have it, then none of us really do. Um, just the other day I was speaking about this with an elderly gentleman from my area who would describe himself as a committed Christian. And he said to me, Megan, the way I see it is, if you're using the Bible to hate people, you're using it wrong. And I thought that was quite a, prof a profound statement for him to make. Today's motion is about civil marriage. And I think it's sad that I already know that there's going to be all sorts of ridiculous arguments made here as a distraction from that and throughout the course of the debate. And I do think people should be careful with their words because what happens in here has a direct impact on people's lives out there. This is about dignity and human rights. Gay and lesbian people do not want special treatment. They don't want different rights from those that straight people already have. They just want equality under the law. Adoption rights are another element of this wider debate. The narrative that a child needs a man and a woman to be raised properly is completely false. In reality, all a child needs is a loving home and environment to grow up in. My mum is from a single parent family, and I actually think it's insulting to single parent families everywhere to say that a child needs a mother and a father, and all you, all you need is a loving environment, as I've already said. In fact, I think it's insulting to all families to say that. Um, the sad reality is that there's people out there who would rather not live than be openly themselves because of the intimidation they would face, and I think that's an indictment on our entire society. We cannot stop until we have achieved full legislative equality, extending the same rights, privileges, and protections to all. 
None of us can judge or quantify true love. Sexuality is not a choice, and neither are the people we, we love. We should let people who love each other be together in the way that other couples are able to, people like my friends, some of who are here today. Um, and despite another abuse of the petition of concern from the DUP, I want to encourage all progressive-minded people to do the right thing today and support this motion. Of course, we, we have to recognise that in the overall fight for LGBT equality, we should recognise that marriage is just one of the many battles that need to be fought. We've seen blatant and often DUP-led discrimination against the LGBT community in recent times, whether it's the blood ban, adoption rights, um, or the so-called conscience clause. There's a long battle ahead of us, and the reality is that the people who will vote against us today will be on the wrong side of history. And when in years to come I'm asked where I was during the fight for equal rights, I'll be more than proud to say I was there. I call Ms. Arlene Foster. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I rise to oppose uh, the motion before the House today. Um, this motion has been brought by Sinn Féin not out of love and respect for the homosexual community in Northern Ireland, but for their own cynical uh, party political posturing. And I have to say, comments from Chris Little are, of course, also disgraceful, uh, but some would say that that's more about their desperation in East Belfast than it is about the debate here in the House today. The motion is uh, couched in the usual Sinn Féin speak of equality. The call for equality suggests that there are not equal rights for gay people in relationships, and of course that's factually wrong. We have civil partnerships here in Northern Ireland, and these allow persons of the same sex to acknowledge their commitment to each other uh, in relationships. And civil partners in Northern Ireland enjoy the same rights as those couples who have entered a same-sex marriage in England. And of course, we should remember that Sinn Féin's equality agenda is not all that it would seem. It is a twisted logic brought forward to demonise those who disagree with it. Any motion from Sinn Féin on equality has to be put in the context of the comments of their party president, Gerry Adams, in Enniskillen a couple of months ago. And I do apologise to the House for the use of foul language, uh, but Mr Adams said, and I quote, we use equality as the Trojan horse to break the bastards, referring to this party. The IRA didn't break this community when they tried to murder and bomb us into submission, and they won't succeed in their false equality agenda either, for that is what it is. It is false. To the gay community, I say I respect you. In many individual cases, uh, you are my friends and I enjoy social fellowship, but don't allow Sinn Féin to suck you into their agenda. Remember, it is themselves alone. As apologists for some of the most heinous crimes in Northern Ireland, they have zero credibility to campaign on any issue of equality. Now, I know that many gay people have been subject to homophobic attacks because they are in a minority, and I know what it's like to live as part of a minority community. I know what it's like to be forced from my home because we didn't agree with the mainstream view in our neighbourhood. I empathise with those who have been the victims of homophobic attacks. They are wrong on every level. Just as my forced exodus from my home, aged eight, was wrong. But you won't hear Sinn Féin campaigning for me and others like me because they sponsored such actions. Every time, and this is the fourth time this motion comes before the Assembly, it causes distress. It causes distress to those who support the institution of marriage. And I have had many who have phoned, emailed, called with me, absolutely distressed at the prospect of redefinition. And frankly, it also causes distress to the LGBT community as it raises unrealistic expectations every time this motion comes back before the House. Of course, Sinn Féin don't care that they cause widespread distress. In actual fact, it adds to their day. Finally, those who support marriage and oppose its redefinition have been labelled as homophobic by those inside the House and those outside the House. Such an expression is, of course, lazy politics. It is lazy journalism. Indeed, it is dangerous politics and dangerous journalism. And unlike the party opposite, I have a consistent record on opposing violence against anyone, regardless of their sexuality, their race, their religious or political opinion. And if respect and tolerance are to be the order of the day, 
then it is a two-way street. To be clear, I and my party are willing to play our part, and I hope that there are those in the LGBT community who are willing to display respect and tolerance for those of us who believe in marriage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, and I call Mr. Chris Hazard. Uh, and I rise to again welcome this motion and, and, and indeed support it. Uh, undoubtedly, our society here in the North has been rocked over the weekend uh, as a result of the actions and words of the outgoing Health Minister, Jim Wells. But first, let me put on record um, my genuine hope that Jim and his family take the time now over the next number of weeks uh, to, to uh, be able to move on to a better place for, him, for himself and, of course, for the health uh, of, of his wife. But what we need to do now, what we need to hear from the DUP, is they haven't just heard the huge backlash from local people, but they've listened as well. The days of vilifying and attacking our LGBT brothers and sisters are over. As communities across the world modernise and look to sweep away any vestiges of archaic discrimination and equality, we must too look to show leadership and legislate for equality in all issues across all parts of society. When I was graduating from university, the keynote speaker told us to go forth and change society, that oppositional voices would be strong, but the insatiable desire for progress would ultimately win the day. He was 100 per cent right. We will see marriage equality across this island for our gay and lesbian brothers and sisters. There is no doubt about that. It won't be today, and it won't happen if we sit back and do nothing. It's why we continue to champion the rights of our LGBT community. It's why we continue to bring this motion to the floor time and time again. And we will do so until we're blue in the face and until it's successful. Danny Kinahan belittled the motion as party politics, but then went on to say that he hadn't really taken the time to think about the issues before. This shows you exactly why it is important to bring this motion if it makes people have a think. I would also suggest that Danny goes and talks to his party colleague Harold McKee in South Down, because Harold certainly needs to take the time to think as well. This is why that these motions are very, very important. It's also why the marriage referendum in the South uh, is very important. It's another welcome stage on the road to equality across this island. And I look forward to be able to ca uh, campaign with my comrades in the South once the Westminster campaign is over in a couple of weeks. Nelson McCausland says he's wedded to the traditional and original concept of marriage, but even a cursory glance at the evolution of the definition of marriage would show that it has changed throughout the ages. Now, I know Nelson's not the biggest fan of evolution, but surely if we keep bringing this message back, the progressive voices within the party will come to the fore. The people like Pam Cameron, who stood up and realised that Jim Wells was wrong and distanced ourselves from them comments. We need to see more progressive voices from the DUP to stand up for our brothers and sisters. I also want to tackle this issue. Yeah, I will give away. Go ahead. Uh, listen with interest to what the member is saying. Does that mean by the same token he condemns and rejects that which the Archbishop of the Catholic Church, Archbishop Eamon Martin, has written to Assembly members in respect of this debate, where he very carefully points out that the motion on same-sex marriage undermines a key foundation of the common good, where he says, we say this both as a matter of human reason and of religious conviction. We believe the union of a man and a woman in marriage open to the procreation of children is a gift from God who created us male and female. Uh, and he order, goes on order, to say order, that it is order, interventions, of law to talk Intervention in should be short, yeah. and you know that. Does he also repudiate the Archbishop? Order. For intervention. I tend not to reply to statements, but I am, it is a welcome development to see that the member is now sticking up for the rights of the Catholic Church and is so interested in the interest in the, the press releases of the Catholic Church. The Bishop, of course, has every right to comment on this. I don't agree with what the Bishop has to say on this matter. I think we are dealing specifically here today about civil marriage, and a number of people have touched upon that. Indeed, uh, and I'm not saying that the, the bishop was doing this, but certainly uh, various parties in this chamber tend to resort to weaponising scripture when it comes to these debates. I think it's a retreat into the world uh, of scripture. I don't think it does anything to, to help themselves. They know that there's no empirical evidence uh, to back up their case. So what they do is they resort back to texts that are thousands of years old, that distort the meanings of them in various ways, and they saturate society with this twisted logic that does nothing but hold us back. 
I also want to touch finally upon this issue of re redefinition of marriage, of how this would redefine marriage, and it's a complete fallacy. The suffragettes did not redefine the voting practices. You only have to look around this building to see that there's still enough women in politics. The black Americans didn't redefine how we eat out. They only wanted a seat at the table. And our lesbian, gay and, uh, and bisexual community only want a seat at the table of marriage. They do not want to redefine it. They simply want a piece of the cake. Gorham Yogurt. Thank you. And I call Mr. Danny Kennedy. Mr. <coughs> Speaker, um, at the outset, uh, I want to uh, make plain that I will be opposing uh, the motion. Uh, this is yet another debate, uh, the fourth, uh, the, on this issue in a very short period of time. Uh, it's very clear today that uh, to everyone that the decision of this House will not change, not least uh, as a consequence uh, of the petition uh, of concern tabled. But I say to the proposers of this motion uh, that they are guilty. Uh, of engaging in a highly cynical political exercise, and undoubtedly an electoral exercise that will be of absolutely no benefit to any section of our community, least of all the LGBT community who are being deliberately used by Sinn Féin for per perceived political advantage. Uh, I choose to speak not as a minister or indeed uh, on behalf of the Ulster Unionist Party, the House will know that my party believes that issues of this nature are matters of personal conscience. Therefore, although called as an Ulster Unionist, I speak in a personal capacity. And it is a matter of regret that, that members of all political parties are not allowed the liberty to speak freely to their conscience uh, on, on this issue. In uh, previous debates on this matter, I, I made clear my opposition to any change in the current legislation in order to allow for same-sex marriage. That remains my position. It's a position based on my religious beliefs and is consistent with the teaching of my church, the Presbyterian Church, but also the publicly expressed views of other churches, including, as we've heard, the Roman Catholic Church and the Church of Ireland. And finally, it is a position which I believe is fundamentally consistent with the teaching of Holy Scripture. And what is of importance to me in this debate is not the teaching of any church, but the teaching of Scripture itself. And it is clear to me and my understanding of Scripture that there should be no change in the current situation. I have, in the past debates on this subject, highlighted my clear view on the clear differences which exist in the teaching of the church and the law of the land as both define marriage. The separation of church and state, therefore, becomes of extreme importance. The state has no right to dictate the terms of religious marriage to the church. The state has created the mechanisms under which same-sex civil partnerships can be enacted with protections under the law, which in most cases are equivalent to the responsibilities, the rights, the obligations and benefits enjoyed by married heterosexual couples. In my view, it is neither sensible nor desirable to allow the state to interfere in the religious institution of marriage simply for political convenience. Redefining marriage would have far-reaching consequences for our entire society. Furthermore, I do not believe that there is widespread public support in Northern Ireland for such a proposal. And in holding my view, I do not believe that I should be regarded uh, as homophobic, and indeed any suggestion would offend and abhor me. I do not disparage the LGBT community, many of whom I count as personal friends. Neither is it my role or practice to be judgmental. But for the reasons that I have set out, personal and deeply held convictions that I cannot and will not set aside, I remain opposed to this proposal. And I call Mr Alec Atwood. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, save his colleagues in the DUP, I am probably one of those people who have known uh, Jim Wells in the political world for longest because uh, we were at college together 35 years ago at Queen's 
and my sense of the man is that just as he carried his responsibilities as health minister heavily, I think the last couple of days uh, he has probably carried uh, the issue that has arisen heavily as well. And for, that, for those reasons, whilst I think the decision is the right one, I would convey to him and his family uh, personal good wishes. Um, Mr. Uh, Speaker, uh, could I make a number of points about uh, this uh, particular issue? If there is one thing that we should draw from the last two or three days, or the last two or three months, or the last two or three years and decades, is that if our society is not based upon respectful relationships, then we end up in a situation of not just disrespect, but of dis division and denial. So I think that this debate, if it is meant to mean anything, in the context of the last number of days, and the context of all our learning over the last number of decades, is that if it does not, if this debate and this issue and all the other issues that crowd in, in our society are not based upon respectful relationships, then we end up ill-serving our community and our society. And you can see that across the full range of political and policy issues that we face at the moment and that we are going to face after the election, not least the issue of the resolution of parades disputes. So the one thing that we have to conclude from all of this is that all of these debates have to be informed by a approach that is about respectful relationships. Otherwise, difference is, point, is forced to the point of division, and people's rights are forced to the point of denial. I remember recalling reading a book, Mr. Speaker, a number of years ago, which argued that the future of Ireland uh, had to move away from what they referred to as the bloodlines of ethnicity to the lifelines of human rights. And whilst I wouldn't completely agree with that analysis, because I believe our different backgrounds is part of the richness and the diversity of this island, I do agree with the argument that the society that we have to create here and elsewhere has to be based around the lifelines of human rights. And that's the approach that the SDLP take in relation to this issue. That because of Article 12 of the European Convention on Human Rights and because of Article 14 of the Convention on Human Rights that have been interpreted and judiciated in relation to equal marriage, that should be the template and the standard that we uphold when it comes to the issue of equal marriage. But could I confirm that in so doing, the words of my colleague uh, from, uh, from Derry, Mr Eastwood, that recognising equal marriage can be accommodated in a way that also recognises moral tenets and the theological and faith views of many in our community. And could I say uh, also to the DUP that in making those arguments, this is not a temporary response. It is a permanent guarantee uh, going forward. Could I express some regret in relation to the contribution of the uh, proposer of the motions? We are a party that comes from a tradition of democratic dissent. It is at the heart of what was created in democratic struggle in this part of the island of, of, the island of Ireland after all the years of inequality. Dissent is part of our creed and we welcome and encourage it, unlike our own party. And that that dissent on issues of freedom of conscience means that our party allows people to not vote in favour of equal marriage on an issue of, consent, or of an issue of conscience to uphold the right of dissent. And finally, Mr. S Mr. Uh, Speaker, to be talked to in this chamber about the denial of rights of others when people in our society were denied rights 
because of the Order uniformity the war of their religion or of their the members time is up is please utter hypocrisy. I'm on my feet and I call the minister with just of time before question time if that would help thank you uh, mr speaker mr speaker can i begin by by joining with many contributors who have today wish jim wells and his wife well at this difficult time for them and their wider family uh, i would however go further than many and condemn the vile abuse um, personal abuse and threats that he and his family have received, yeah, particularly yeah, yeah. over social media in the last number of days. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the baseball commentator Yogi Berra once famously said, it's deja vu all over again. I know how he felt. This is the fourth time this subject has been debated in this assembly term, and it is deja vu all over again. Effectively the same motion proposed by the same people with the same MLA speaking, saying the same things, with most probably the same outcome. I note that the call to action in the motion is directed at the executive as a whole. However, as the subject matter falls within the remit of my department, I have agreed to respond. In saying that I believe that this motion will suffer the same fate as the three previous motions, I am not seeking to be curt or dismissive. I am merely recognising the fact that most members have voted and will continue to vote according to their own consciences, no matter how much pressure is brought to bear. There would appear to be a view that claims of inequality, if repeated often enough, will inevitably succeed. When the last motion was debated on the 29th of April 2014, there was talk of second-class citizens, marginalisation and discrimination. The reality is, I am happy to say, somewhat different from the rhetoric. Same-sex couples in Northern Ireland are not denied the opportunity to live in a loving, secure, stable and permanent relationship with all of the protections and benefits that such a relationship can bring. They can do just that by entering into a civil partnership, and many have. If you choose to focus on negative concepts such as marginalisation and discrimination, you will inevitably lower self-esteem and create unnecessary divisions. Different approaches are not lesser or discriminatory approaches, and it is wrong to imply that civil partnership is an inferior status. Our marriage law recognises a unique relationship between a man and a woman, just as our law on civil partnerships recognises a unique relationship between two people of the same sex. Those who criticise civil partnerships are quick to suggest that other jurisdictions have a greater respect for diversity because they have introduced same-sex marriage. However, such suggestions should not be taken at face value, as same-sex marriage in some jurisdictions has not resulted in certain restrictions being lifted for same-sex couples. Such restrictions are not, of course, highlighted because they undermine the arguments that some prefer to present. Critics are also quick to suggest that Northern Ireland must introduce same-sex marriage because the other constituent jurisdictions of the United Kingdom have done so. However, the position in the UK is by no means unique, and other jurisdictions such as the United States, New Zealand and the Netherlands have territories which have not introduced same-sex marriage. Furthermore, Northern Ireland is not alone in the world in not having legislated for same-sex marriage. There are close to 200 countries in the world. Only 17 allow same-sex marriage. A further 30, of which we are one, have civil partnerships with similar protections. Notable countries who have not approved same-sex marriage include Australia, Germany, Italy and a third of the states in the US. The list of countries that have not introduced same-sex marriage is much longer than the list that has. Some states now provide for same-sex marriage following a democratic vote or judicial ruling, and I respect the position in those states. Next month, the Republic of Ireland will decide whether it wants to amend its constitution to allow for same-sex marriage, and again, I will respect the outcome in that jurisdiction. However, comparisons with other jurisdictions are ultimately of limited value. This Assembly does not and should not simply align itself with other legislatures. It has a duty to question, to challenge, to probe, and to produce laws that take account of the needs and interests of all of our citizens. A major reason we have devolution is so that we can have different laws than other parts of the United Kingdom to suit the views of the people of Northern Ireland on our particular circumstances. Mr. Speaker, the argument for the motion and a redefinition of marriage is again grounded in equality. But, Mr. Speaker, this is not an equality issue. People in Northern Ireland have an equal opportunity to enter into a committed relationship with all of the benefits that that entails. 
Opposite-sex couples can do that through marriage, and same-sex couples can do it through civil partnerships. It has been acknowledged that a same-sex marriage in England and Wales confers the same, the same, not different, not more, the same benefits as a same-sex civil partnership. Equality is not, therefore, the issue. Article 16 of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, as upheld by the UN Human Rights Committee, defends a traditional view of marriage. In European law, Article 12 of the European Convention on Human Rights also upholds that definition, and the European Court of Human Rights has deemed the definition of marriage not a matter of equality, but a matter for individual state law. The Northern Ireland Human Rights Commission has highlighted that the international treaties that protect the right to marry, but has conceded that, quote, the restriction of marriage to opposite sex couples does not violate the international standards, and this is clear from both the international treaties and the jurisprudence of the European Court of Human Rights and the United Nations Human Rights Committee. Mr. Speaker, it is clear, therefore, that the United Nations, Europe, and our own Human Rights Commission all agree that this is not an issue of equality. The motion uses a language of religious tolerance and it suggests that suitable protections can be afforded to people of faith. However, the proposed protections only relate to the clergy and religious organisations. There is no offer to protect the religious beliefs of others, such as teachers or registrars. Mr. Speaker, there is a tendency to portray opposition to same-sex marriage as evidence of an underlying animus towards the lesbian and gay community, and that is wholly unjust. As I have said previously in this House, opposition to same-sex marriage is not grounded on opposition to any particular type of relationship, but on support for the traditional, long-standing, centuries-old definition of marriage and a genuine belief that our current legislative framework achieves a fair balance between the competing interests. In all of the correspondence I have received in advance of this debate from those opposing a redefinition of marriage, and that correspondence, Mr. Speaker, has far outweighed any in favour, none of the language used by good people from across this country has been nasty or bitter or aimed personally at members of the gay and lesbian community. Yet these people are often painted and portrayed as bigots by those who, ironically, want to redefine marriage on the basis of, an, of tolerance. I have said it before in this House, but it is worth repeating. I was always taught that tolerance was when you disagreed with somebody, but you respected their right to have a different position to you. Today, unfortunately, it would seem that for some, when you fail to fall in line with their thinking, you are the intolerant one. Mr. Speaker, opposing a redefinition of marriage isn't bigotry, or narrow-mindedness, or even intolerance. It is a view held by many in Northern Ireland indeed by quite possibly the majority of people in Northern Ireland. Those people are members of the Presbyterian Church, they are members of the Catholic Church, they are members of no church at all. They are members on all sides and in all corners of this House. Mr Speaker, as we debate this issue in this place and outside, whether for or against, the true meaning of tolerance should be at the forefront of our minds and be reflected in the language that we use. Mr. Speaker, I oppose the motion. Yeah. 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 Point of order. Could the House have an explanation as to why the 90 minutes allocated for this debate does not appear to be going to be utilised, and why, indeed, in the calling of speakers, if my mathematics is correct, twice as many people were called to speak in favour of the motion as to oppose it? Point, sir. Uh, the, the minister was called when there was just barely the 15 minutes left to, uh, that he was entitled to to respond to the debate. And in the debate itself proper, there were in fact contributions from people who were speaking against and those who were speaking for, and to that extent it was a balanced discussion. Uh, the House will now take its ease until after question time, and the first speaker will be Dahi Mackay to wind on the debate. Point of order, Mr. McRae. I also have a point of order under uh, Section 17 of the Standing Orders. I understand that this is a cross-community uh, uh, debate, and that the vote will be taken on that basis. And I just respectfully draw to your attention, Mr. Speaker, that there was only one unionist that was speaking in favour or against, in favour of the motion, and quite a few otherwise. I would have preferred to have had the opportunity to add to the balance of the debate. And. I mean, I have considerable sympathy for the position 
and indeed uh, there are a few members who have their names down in the debate. I would love to have had the, uh, the time to have brought them in because I think they would have added to the value of the debate. However, I have to work within the decision of the Business Committee. They allocated 90 minutes. They allowed 15 minutes of a response from the Minister. They allowed 10 minutes to propose and 10 minutes to wind. And then every other speaker was given the, uh, a five-minute slot. That included interventions. Some members did not use the entire five minutes. Some members abused the privilege and spoke longer than the five minutes, despite my efforts to move them along, because I was anxious to include those who had taken the time to put their names on the list. And I have to apologise that that was not possible in this debate. Order. And we now return to the debate on the motion on marriage equality. And I call Mr. Danny Mackay to conclude and wind on the debate. Um, I rise to support the motion. Um, I think it's been a worthwhile uh, debate. Some members made reference to the fact that we've been here before and will be here again, I'm sure, uh, until this issue is dealt with as it is being dealt with. Uh, elsewhere on this island uh, and elsewhere uh, on the island opposite as well. <coughs> I want to start at Can Coyer. Uh, Justin McAleese uh, gave an interview uh, to uh, a newspaper recently and made reference to uh, the MP for North Antrim uh, and the effect that his comments had on his own personal life uh, and the struggle he had not to come to terms with his sexuality but to come to terms with how society much of society was opposed to his sexuality and him as a person uh, and what he was uh, as well. Uh, an interesting quote, what he said was, he said, language matters. He said, words matter. Uh, a marriage matters. And I think that's something that many of the members opposite uh, in the DUP need to reflect on. Uh, because you know, when it comes to language, when it comes to words, they have a, a deeply uh, damaging effect uh, on, on people, on members of the, LG, of the LGBT uh, community. I'll not give way, sir. Um, and, and the response to that, which is in the Irish Times today, from Mr. Paisley, he thinks that Mr. McAleese and others should get over themselves. You know, that, that was the response uh, that the MP for North Antrim made. He said, all this stuff where people are self-absorbed about their own gender and how everything is about them, get over it get over yourself. You know, that is not a mature response uh, for an MP, an MLA, an M MEP, any elected representative uh, on this uh, island. <coughs> Churches, of course, have different views uh, on marriage equality. Political parties have different views uh, on it as well. Uh, but Danny Kennehan made an important point. He said marriage is not just a religious institution. Uh, we have civil marriage. We have marriage uh, and many uh, of our churches. Uh, and language used uh, by the DUP as a party, by many leading members, uh, is despicable in my view. It is dangerous. It is actually dangerous. Uh, and it, it is wrong. And also for a party that talks about itself uh, as a party of the economy, uh, it is very embarrassing uh, on an international stage when we are trying to secure investment, when we are trying to secure uh, jobs. Uh, and foreign and direct investment. A lot of these comments uh, put people off, put companies off. You know, there, there will be different views in terms of marriage equality, but it's the language that is used uh, by the Democratic Unionist Party uh, that makes some of these stories uh, go around the world faster than, than anything else. And marriage is not something that has been the same uh, institution for thousands of years. Marriage has changed many times. It has had many forms. Uh, and what we are talking about uh, in terms of the LGBT community uh, is civil marriage. We're not talking about marriage uh, in a church. We're talking about civil marriage, which was introduced in the 1800s. So this doesn't go back centuries. Uh, civil marriage has been subject to many changes uh, in recent times. This isn't something that goes back thousands of, of years. Marriage has changed over time. Uh, it needs to continue to change, and it needs to change uh, for the better. But I think what this does highlight is the fact that church and state uh, need to be separate. Uh, we have to accommodate everyone uh, who lives in society. Uh, we have to accommodate people uh, of all backgrounds. Uh, some churches 
do not advocate divorce. Uh, government offers people the choice of divorce, uh, but they do not have to avail of it. Some churches oppose contraception, uh, and the state allows people the freedom to make up their own mind uh, in regard to that there. Some churches oppose marriage for same-sex couples, uh, and government should ensure, sh should ensure uh, that same-sex couples have the choice to decide uh, for themselves. And no one who does not believe in same-sex marriage, no one who doesn't believe in marriage for that matter, uh, doesn't have to enter into one uh, if they don't want to. <coughs> and of course, you know, sometimes this debate uh, almost sets uh, church and religion against the rest of society. Uh, but as we know, there are many strands within Christianity, there are many strands within Judaism uh, and other religions who actually have no issue uh, with uh, marriage between people uh, of the same uh, gender. Uh, there are many members, I know of many members in society in the north, I know members of the Presbyterian Church, uh, I know members uh, of the Catholic Church who have no problem with uh, equal marriage uh, as well. Uh, and I think in terms of uh, the resignation uh, of the Health Minister, I think it's hugely uh, significant. Uh, this is the first time that a politician has been forced to, to resign in the North because of the strength of public opinion uh, against homophobic remarks. I think that's a big change for us as a society, particularly in, in the North uh, of this island. <coughs> I believe the public uh, recognise that it's wrong, that it's simply wrong uh, to speak about gay people uh, in that way. Nelson McCausland uh, spoke about the need to protect uh, traditional marriage. He spoke about the wider impact uh, on society. But he didn't give any evidence to back any of that up. You know, marriage equality has been introduced in a number of countries now, uh, and the sky hasn't fallen in. You know, it's taken place in Scotland. Has, has society been uh, irreversibly damaged in Scotland? No, it hasn't. Uh, most people now look at Scotland as somewhere where there's been a lot of political debate in the past couple of years. It's become a better society. And I believe that this society will follow in its footsteps uh, as well. <coughs> uh, the Enterprise Minister, or the, the member for Fermanagh and South Tyrone, uh, said she was sympathetic to those. Uh, victims of homophobic uh, attacks, but what she failed to do, she failed to make the link between those attacks uh, 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 and the prejudice that leads to those attacks in the first place. And, and that's, I'll come back to what I said at the start. You know, members of this House need to be especially conscious of, of their comments, uh, and I do recognise that there are those on the unionist benches uh, who uh, approach this issue. Uh, with the sensitivity that is required, but there are many uh, who do, no, do not, and they do not recognise the impact uh, of their comments. <coughs> Danny Kennedy um, said that we were doing it, we had brought this uh, motion forward for electoral purposes. Uh, that is nonsense. Uh, this uh, is not something about getting uh, more votes. You know, we may get more votes in certain areas because we have a line in regard uh, to equal marriage. I know people who won't vote for this party, but voted for us in the past because of the issue uh, of equal marriage. The reason we bring this motion to the floor is because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Katrina Ryan <coughs> rightly made reference to the fact that this issue could affect members' children, uh, it could affect members' grandchildren, uh, it could have consequences in our own families that, that members may not yet be aware of. Uh, and I'm sure, in terms of the comments that were made uh, in the past number of days, that there will be and there have been uh, children of gay members of our community who, who have went to their parents and, and simply asked, knowing the fact their parent is gay, uh, and, and asking what Jim Wells uh, is talking about. So that is wrong that people have been put uh, in that uh, position. And of course, many gay people, many gay people's children, uh, also face the brunt of homophobia, of the rollout from these comments uh, in our schoolyards uh, as well. <coughs> Danny Kenahan made reference to his own uh, experience within the British Army. And of course, we will all know 
growing up uh, in the schoolyards and, and the playgrounds, the, the rampant homophobia, certainly in my generation, uh, when I grew up, the number of comments, children didn't know what they were saying, uh, but that was rampant throughout our playgrounds. Uh, and I am sure that that still goes on. I, am, I know it still goes on uh, to a very high degree. That has a big impact in terms of depression. That has a big in impact in terms of anxiety. That has a big impact in terms of suicide. You know, so that needs to be a priority uh, for the executive, in my view. That needs to be a priority in terms of education uh, and health and all of the relevant, uh, uh, all the relevant departments uh, there. I would like to pay tribute, uh, I can't call in the closing seconds, <coughs> to everyone in the LGBT community that has campaigned and will continue to campaign uh, on this issue until they succeed. And I have no doubt that the momentum is firmly with them. Every single Sinn Féin MLA will vote for same-sex marriage uh, here uh, today. And I would urge other progressive parties to ensure that a full complement of their members does the same. Thank you. Order. I would like to remind members that the vote on the motion will be on a cross-community basis. The question is that the motion stand in order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Clear the lobbies. The question will be put in three minutes. Order. Members resume their seats, please. The motion standing on the order papers be agreed. The question is that the motion standing on the order papers be agreed. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no.
Do we have tellers? Order. Tellers have been appointed as follows. Tellers for the ayes are Katrina Ruyan and Megan Ferdin. Tellers, order, order. Tellers for the noes are George Robinson and Adrian McQuillan. Clear the lobbies. The assembly will divide. Ayes to my right, noes to my left.
Secure the doors. You don't need to tell them. You know, you know what they do.
Order, members. <coughs> Clerk, read the result. 96 members voted, of which 47 voted aye, 49 per cent. 37 nationalists voted, of which 37 voted aye, 100 per cent. 53 unionists voted, of which 4 voted aye, 7.5 per cent. 6 others voted, of which 6 voted aye, 100 per cent. Three members who voted in both lobbies are not included in these results. The motion is negative. The motion is negative. Point of order. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wish, I wish to raise, I wish to raise, Mr. Speaker, a matter of uh, security. Um, in this debate, which has lasted an hour and a half, uh, there were nine members who spoke. Uh, from the benches of Sinn Féin, the SDLP, the UUP and the Alliance. And on all sides there was mention and criticism of my colleague, the Honourable Member for South Down, Jim Wells. Uh, that member has been subjected to the most severe online intimidation and harassment since the events of the past four days, Mr Speaker. Not a single member mentioned or condemned that harassment and uh, vile abuse that he has received, not just for himself, but for his family, and also some of it used his seriously ill wife's name as well. That, Mr. Speaker, I hope you will agree, is a shame and a disgrace on every member who spoke and didn't refer to it, let alone condemn it. Further to that same point of order? Further to that point of order. Um, I was here for the entire debate. I heard every single member who spoke sympathise with Mr Jim Wells. And just in case there's any ambiguity, um, every single person who spoke here sympathised with Mr Wells. And I'm sure I speak for everyone in this House when I condemn any abuse towards anyone, including Mr Wells. Order, order, order. Order. I listened very carefully to what uh, Mr. Campbell has raised, and, and he did uh, isolate and mention the, the fact that there was no reference to the, uh, the abuse. Uh, and whilst uh, that is out with this assembly, uh, I have no grounds or, or reason to doubt that, in fact, uh, Mr. Wells and his family were subjected to that, and I think it's reprehensible if that's the case. However, I don't think it is a point of order for the, uh, the debate that we had in this assembly, uh, that that wasn't mentioned. You know, it's a sin of omission in your perspective. But of course, on all sides of the chamber, there was the opportunity for people to raise that particular aspect equally. Yeah. And so it is a matter of the record of the debate. And on that basis, then, I do not accept your point of order. Order item 7 on the order paper is the adjournment. The question is that the Assembly do now adjourn.